Hello everyone, an unedited Hank's channel video for you. Why? Because I don't have time to edit it, but if an important thing is happening, which is that tonight, Dimension 20 Mintopolis premieres at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. And I think that you can actually watch it live if you're signed up for Dropout, which is a thing that you can do. Uh, if, you, if you want to, you can do that on the... I'd, I'd prefer that you did it on the internet rather than through the app, because if you do it through the app, then Apple takes a third of the money, because that's the rules, or Google does. Either way, whatever. Dementia 20 is a streaming platform. It's got so much very funny content on it. It's one of my favorite platforms, and I'm not being paid for this, and I feel like I should be, but here we are. I think that you should sign up. I specifically, specifically think that you should sign up, because tonight at... 7 o'clock Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Pacific. Dimension 20 Mentopolis premieres, which is an actual play uh, D&D role-playing game. It's not actually D&D, uh, but it's an actual play role-playing game where uh, me and five friends, some of whom I did not know walking into the room, uh, made a show together, and it's so cool. And I want to tell you a little bit about why it's so cool and what it's like to be a D Dimension 20 cast member. I've never seen anybody talk about this, uh, but it's really bizarre and very interesting. So it started out with Brennan Lee Mulligan, who is the DM, or the Game Master, the GM of this game, uh, emailing and being like, hey, do you want to do this? And I like I expressed interest a bunch of times, but like there's lots of logistics to work out. And uh, and he actually, I mean, this is remarkable, but he actually was like, here are three ideas that I've got right now. And he pitched them all to me. And he kind of let me pick. And that was tricky. And that was hard. And then once the sort of world was set up, so like the, the world of this game is kind of like inside out, but noir detective story. So uh, it all takes place inside of a man's brain. And we don't, we, like, aren't the consciousness and everybody's sort of working together, but it's easy to be in the brain and actually not know what's sort of going on more broadly. So there are lots of little bits of the brain all working together to figure stuff out. So there's, like, I, for example, um, this is, a, the guy's a scientist, and I decided, after a lot of debate, so this is another hard part, like, after we decided on this, Brennan went and he, like, did a bunch of research like on neuroscience and talk to a bunch of neuroscientists to sort of help him build out the world, which is amazing. He did a huge amount of work on this and then sort of came to us and was like, well, I want like it to be like fun and punny, but also sort of gritty. And, uh, and but I want all of you to be like aspects of a mind. And so like, for example, Freddie Wong plays a character called Daniel Fux. He runs a speakeasy and he's like the, sort of like carnal urges guy. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I, I <laughs> when we'd all gone around the table and had our like clever little puns and he was like, I'm going to be called Dan Fox. And I was like, okay, yeah, I, yep. <laughs> we were, there was no debate. We were like, yes, we all agree that that is a good idea. So I, I want to try and get through a lot of this, but I got to go get my radiation in 20 minutes. So I'm going to, like, 15 minutes from now, I, the video will be over, one way or another. Um, so, yeah, and, and then it was, like, up to me to decide who I wanted to be, and it was tricky. And I kept being drawn back towards a tough, which is, like, a character, like, the barbarian in Dungeons & Dragons. So, like, the, the guy who's just sort of, like, runs in and can take a lot of damage uh, and can deal out a di lot of damage and is sort of on the front line of any physical fight. Um, but the way that I wanted to work that into the brain from so something that I deal with uh, and something that I sort of like have come to understand neurologically or sort of like in terms of the consciousness is that, you know, hyperfixation, uh, hyper like like really focused attention, what it's about is not so much the focus, it's about the elimination. So it's not about what you're doing, it's about what you're not, per like, not about what you're perceiving, it's about what you're not perceiving. And I love this. Um, so it's just a, like, basically there's a system that is carving out everything around you. And that's something that like happens to me. And people will be like, I can't believe you didn't notice that that thing happened. And I'm just like, that's not how I am. I don't see my surroundings oftentimes. Like as soon as I'm 
in amongst a moment, it all, everything falls away. I can often imagine, like I will, I will, this is, I don't know if anybody, this resonates with anyone, but I will often think back to interactions in the real world I had with real people. And I will, I will have placed them in my mind in a different setting than they actually occurred because I wasn't perceiving the setting while it happened. Um, and which I love, I think that's so weird and cool that that happens to me. It also has to be online, but that's less weird where I will place online interactions that I have that are very sort of like significant and I will put them in a real world location. And when I remember them, it will feel like it happened like in a car or by this area that I've, like in this park that I spend time in or something like that. So the thing that I wanted to be was the thing that eliminates the distractions because that's a super powerful power. And that seemed like the, a, a thing that a tough would do in a mind, just eliminates distractions. And, uh, and so constantly all day long, what this guy in the mind does, what this aspect of the mind does is it hunts down, distracts them and uh, distractions and eliminates them. So like rogue thoughts, it kills them. Uh, things that are happening, like impulses that are coming from other parts of the brain, it's just like, it's just, you know, and he's got a big old gun that uh, was modified for his big old fingers. So he's named the fix. Uh, he's, he's the, he allows for hyperfixation. And, uh, and it took a long time to decide on that, but Brennan definitely steered me toward it eventually because I held off making the decision for so long that uh, everybody else had made their decision and we didn't have a tough. And so to, to make the party uh, a more well-rounded to take on the challenges it would have to take on, it was like, it'd be great if you were somebody really big. And then I went and got a bunch of clothes that made me look slightly bigger. <laughs> because I don't have the physique of a tough. Um, so that was sort of like that. That's a quick summary of, of the months before. And then flew to LA, went to the Dimension 20 Studios, and the coolest, wildest thing that they do. So like the time that we have together is very limited and it's expensive. So like the studio time and like all of the people who are there, like, the, like you know, it's, it costs, um, you know, and there's like, it's, it's all the normal support. And so you arrive and instead of beginning filming, which is what I assumed would happen. So like I knew who my character was. I didn't know who anybody else was. I just figured we were gonna have like a quick round and then we'd start playing. And like we'd meet each other the way that you normally do in a normal D&D &D game um, where like the, you know, the adventurers sort of like come together a little bit and, and find out about each other. Um, for a couple of reasons, that's not what happened. They took this extraordinarily valuable time where everybody's already been paid and there's a staff around and craft services is there. And they're like, sit down, we're gonna play with the cameras off. A full, like a full episode basically. So there's like a full, and I don't know if this happens with every Dimension 20, but it's clearly like, you know, a, a thing, like it seemed normal. Um, I don't know if I'm giving away secrets now, but it doesn't, it doesn't seem like that this would be weird, but like, n it's not recorded, like no nothing was on, no audio, and it was a chance, one, I think, so like Siobhan doesn't need this, but I did, <laughs> like, yeah, Freddie doesn't need, like everybody else I think at the table had, maybe not Alex, uh, had done Dimension 20 or Freddie does his own uh, actual play and uh, Dungeons and Daddies, I think. <sighs> Well, I'm not going to Google it because I don't have time. Um, I think is what it's called. And uh, and so to like, I, maybe just for me, like getting me comfortable uh, at the table, which I was so nervous. And this was really valuable because, you know, like they're, you know, Trap is like a professional improv comic. Uh, Alex is just it, like never not funny danielle is just the voice her voice is so amazing like they're all performers and like i'm a performer too and like i've sort of gotten more comfortable with myself in that role uh even more so since d20 uh and like hanging out with a bunch of professional comedians was definitely like ooh, this is appealing these guys are fun um but the uh the it was really intimidating to be amongst these folks who had done it a lot and folks who are just like, you know, top tier performers. 
So I, um, I had made the call to do this thing and I was just gonna like plunge in and do it and I was like ready to be fucking terrified in the first episode. But that's not what happened. And I don't think that I knew this until I arrived. The other thing was it allowed like this, the story of that um, un, unreleasable, so not unreleased, but unreleasable because it's not recorded, which I do very intentionally because they don't want you to think like maybe this will be a Patreon perk someday. They'd say no cameras, everybody off. Um, and what was the, and the sort of storyline was like, what relationships are going to be pre-existing before we enter the room? And so that was the kind, that was the story. And so like, we learned about each other and we didn't go into the room with every character knowing each other in the story. Uh, we went, but we did go into the room with every character knowing at least one other character and having some kind of relationship um, that maybe would come out later in the episode, like maybe it wouldn't be released immediately, uh, but having some kind of like, I care about you in some way, not, maybe not in a positive way, but in some way, like I know and care about you and that dynamic will enter in and will like be previously existing, which I think is really smart because it creates tension where there wouldn't maybe normally be tension already. Um, but that was super... Like that was the most scared I was the whole time. And it was also like, it was also terrifying, but good. And I think I remember this correctly that each, and this also is the way that the first episode, now I'm giving away spoilers, so I shouldn't say that, but you'll be able to tell what I mean. Uh, it, it sort of was like, okay, we're going to start with you two and what relationship you have. And, uh, and then I, like me, I was the last one that they got to so that I could see other people doing it first but also terrifying because I'm like waiting to go though. And I'm like, should I be saying things? Should I be being funny? What's like the rules here? And so it just like lets you understand the, the norms of that table specifically and of the form in general, which is like a whole new kind of content that, that is very you know popular. And there's lots of it, lots of successful actual play stuff. I remember at, go, at PAX one year, I listened to the Penny Arcade actual play and I was in a big room. And I don't remember what that was called, but Will Wheaton was there and maybe Pat Rothfuss was in it. I'm, I know Will was. Um, and it was just so funny and compelling and weird. Uh, and I'd never seen people play D&D &D on a stage before. And I mean, the DM of, I don't remember who that was, but the DM was very good and had a ton of fun watching that. And, and that was sort of my first introduction to it, which was a long time ago. And uh, that was like, must've been like 10 years ago. Cause that was when I was starting VidCon and I was like, I have to go to see other conferences and see what they look and feel like. And PAX was a big model for me. Um, and uh, yeah, and so yeah, I've, I have, you know, I've watched and listened to a lot. Um, you know, I'm I'm almost caught up on Adventure Zone, which is a lot of content. Uh, and I've watched Critical Role, and I had actually, oh yeah, I did Titan's Grave. I mean, I should I should recognize that I have done this publicly before, but it's a different feeling. So it's funny. I said it earlier that I had, but it just had been a long time. Like what's it been eight years since Titan's Grave, um, which you can watch on YouTube for free and is a ton of fun and is me and. Um, Gosh, what is her name? I mean, Laura Bailey, Yuri Lowenthal, and Allison it starts with an H. Um, uh, and uh, DM'd by Will Wheaton. And that, hey, Slip? That sounds right. Sorry, Allison. Uh, and we're like, like, that was like the most fun, weird, summer campy experience of my life where we all became very fast friends and, uh, and it was very special. Um, and then, which I was really looking forward to finding again uh, at the Dimension 20 table and totally did and like love all of my co-hosts or co-players. Uh, so, and once we had finished with episode zero or whatever they called it, the unrecorded episode, we just jumped in and I was definitely scared every episode. <laughs> um, and so, 
And I don't know what other people do, but I was so afraid. And also I had so much time on my hands because like I was alone in Los Angeles um, that I definitely went back to my hotel room and I thought about what might happen a lot. And I thought about what, how I would respond as the fix to the, to the various things that might happen. And, uh, and also just sort of like generally like what, what would his reaction be if he met a, you know, a physical challenge he couldn't overcome. And like, so I like, it, it was very different from actually playing D and D or a tabletop role playing game. Um, and uh, because there was so much pressure to be good at it and to be entertaining while you do it, not that like that that there isn't also that dynamic when you do it on your own, and there always has been for me. Um, but it just seemed much bigger, and it was like it was wild to be like my whole focus of that week of my life was being good at this. I loved that so much that that was like, all, it was like all I thought about. And I don't know, like, I don't think it was really maybe that way for everybody else. Cause they're all, they've done it a bunch and they're all really talented and they were going home to like their uh, like normal situation. Uh, whereas I was going home to being an, alone in my hotel room. Um, but like, yeah, I, I have, I have a notebook that's just like full of like things that I was like, if the fix needs to respond to this situation. Uh, how how would he respond? And also, the fix knows a lot of science facts, so figured I had to include that somehow. Uh, so the fix knows a lot of science facts because he is hyperfixation, and so uh, he, the the result of that is Wikipedia rabbit holes and such. Though this doesn't take place when Wikipedia exists, but he knows a bunch of s stuff, um, and so uh, is sort of like a, at the same time as being terrifically intimidating and. Uh, for good reason, he also uh, can't can't help but share little bits of the things he knows about the universe. So I had to write down a bunch of those to make sure I always had one ready. And then I uh, didn't end up using a bunch of them. Um, so now I've got a notebook full of weird facts, which, you know, that's not a strange thing for me to have. Um, and the, the thing that I was most sad about, I have one minute. The thing that I was most sad about, like that I that I wanted to have happen but didn't happen, is there weren't miniatures in this series, uh, which is maybe a spoiler. But you've seen the board, so there's like a board that does things, and I won't tell you about the things that it does. You'll find out. Uh, but there weren't. They, I um, mean, like that's part. You know, it's part of a part of Dimension Twenty that I really love is being able to like see the miniatures moving around and visualize a battle. Um, like when the first, that first one in, um, the main series that I can't remember the name of Academy, that one, where the, the with like the corn cuties and the principal in the dining room, um, I was just like so charmed by that and the art and the, uh, you know, the little miniature sets are always so good. Um, but we didn't have that. And so I was like, I don't get to keep my mini fig. Uh, but at the end of it, and I... I'm sure it's here somewhere. It is right here. The end of it. Oh my God, I'm super sore because I... Um, I've started working out again after chemo. So be proud of me. Ow! Um, they did give me this. It says, hell yeah, I love Dimension 20 with a little compass inside of it. Um, but I can't really tell you all about the compass yet because... Spoilers. Um, and yeah, and that was just, that was lovely. So I did get something to bring home. And we also, uh, I know that I have it in here somewhere, uh, but I don't see them right now. We all went around the table and took a die from each one of our, uh, friends. So like everybody, since there was six of us, um, we each, and there are six D and D die, uh, we all took one of each other's, the dice that we played with through the whole game and put them uh, mix them up into, um, so that we each have one of each other's, which is adorable. Okay, I gotta go get radiation. Bye. <laughs>